Hey, Shabbat Shalom, my brothers and sisters. Thank you for taking your precious time out on this beautiful Shabbat to come to hear the word of Ahaya, being obedient to his laws, his statutes, and his commandments by honoring the Shabbat, the fourth commandment that the Most High set aside to be a holy convocation and a holy day unto him. So the water for attending this class. Or this lesson or our fellowship you fill in the blank tonight's lesson is going to be the title is the law is the only truth again the tonight's class the title of this class is going to be the law is the only truth knowing that we are Hebrew Israelites from the tribe of Judah Issachar Benjamin and etc it's all good and dandy but just knowing and focusing on genealogy and lineage and prophecies will not lead you into the kingdom to inherit eternal life. We all know that. The truth is the truth is the law that is written in the book that we call the Bible. The Bible tells us, ever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. What does the Bible mean when it says never coming to the knowledge of the truth? It's referring to everyone that is focusing on everything else in the Bible but the truth, which is the laws, statutes, and commandments that Ahia has given us from Genesis to Revelation. By no means necessary, I am not condemning the prophecies, the genealogies, and everything else that is written in the book we call the Bible. But the key to eternal life is the law, statutes, and commandments, period. So today, my Hebrew family, we will go over through scriptures on what exactly, what is the truth according to the Bible. So I pray that you have your pencils, your paper, and take notes because this is life that we're going to speak tonight. Like I just stated, from Genesis to Revelation, that's what the Bible speaks about. The laws, statutes, and commandments, those are the keys to the kingdom. And taking that as a Sabbath, we're preaching the law. Our first scripture is going to be in Baruch chapter 4 and verses 1. Again, that's Baruch chapter 4 and verses 1 in the Apocrypha. I pray that everybody has an Apocrypha. If not, it's time for you to buy one. That's Baruch. Chapter 4 and verses 1. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the Most High, and the law that endureth forever. All, all they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. See, the scriptures clearly tell you that. So I didn't say that. The law is life. The Bible says that. It says it. It says, this is the book of the commandments of the Most High. And the law that endure forever. All that they that keep it shall come to life. But such as leave it shall die. Everybody understand that. So the whole Bible is the book of law, statutes, and commandments. Now let's go to 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse 37. We're going to get a, a couple of scriptures. We're going to do a lot of reading tonight. So I pray that your ears are circumcised and you had your cup of coffee or whatever it takes you, some Korean red ginseng or something, keep you up. So that's 2 Kings chapter 17 and verses 37. One scripture there. Again, 2 Kings chapter 17 and verses 37. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Second Kings, chapter 17, verse 37. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall observe to do forevermore, and you shall not fear other gods. Exactly. We talked about that a little, a little last night. Other people, they, they fear other powers. But there's only one power. 
Only one power. The Most High say, you shall not fear other gods. Why? Because he's the Most High. He's the great I Am. And it's, it clearly states here, and the statutes and the ordinance and the law and the commandments, which he wrote for you and me, you shall observe to do forevermore. And you shall not fear other powers, other gods. As long as we do all these commandments, like MC Hammer said, you can't touch this. So this is giving you confirmation on how important these commandments are, how they are the keys to the kingdom. The way we walk, we should walk in these commandments, meditate on them day and night. That's why I constantly remind brothers and sisters, stay in the spirit. Those that worship the Most High must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we're going to see, we're going to find out what the truth is. Like I say, the title of the lesson, the law is the only truth. We're going to let the scriptures explain it. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 10. Again, that's Proverbs chapter 9 and verses 10. We're going to read one scripture there. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Clear. That's the fear that we're going to have. We're not going to have a fear of the world. They're going to kill us. They're going to torture us. The Bible clearly tells us, don't fear the one that can hurt your body. But fear the one that can hurt your body and your soul. Read that again. Huh? Verse 10. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of wisdom. Stop. It say the fear. Salakia. It say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Everything got a beginning. So the first thing you supposed to fear is the Most High, and then you get the wisdom. Because you you fear people in the street. They got a gun. You fear the game bangers. You fear the police when they're behind you, and they're gonna be, they're about to do damage to you. The problem is we don't fear the Most High. They say the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the only fear that I'm going to meditate on and concentrate on. Not man, not woman, and nothing. They say it's the beginning of wisdom. Go ahead. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Like the scriptures say, whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Humble yourself. But that's the truth. That's the truth. And that's what we're preaching on tonight. The truth. The law is the only truth. That's the law right there. Whatever the most I tell you to do, that's the law. Fear him. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 142. Psalms 119 and 142. Again, Psalms 119 and 142. Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is is the truth. Say that again. And thy law is the truth. See, the law is the truth. What's the title of our lesson? The law is the only truth. You see, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So it's good to know we Hebrews. It's good to know we're from our tribes. It's good to know Hebrew language. But if you ain't got the law, you ain't got the truth. That's like the scripture say, forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. What that means, you never coming to these laws. 
You got all this knowledge, how to speak Hebrew, how to write Hebrew, know your whole history, know the whole genealogy, the philosophy, the prophecies, all these things. The Pharisees and Sadducees knew that. The forefathers knew that. But you don't keep these laws, you ain't got no truth. You just got a whole lot of knowledge. And you ain't going to take no test to get into the kingdom. So I pray that y'all really read that again, brethren. Speak boldly. This is Psalms 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Thy law is the truth. I'm going to keep saying that. And thy law is the truth. Nothing else. Not elder the bar, not no sister, no brother. The law is the truth. Let every man be a lot. The most high is right. All the time. Every day. 24 hours. It's about these laws. And he says laws is not grievous. So it's not hard. This is not hard at all. Let's go to uh, John chapter 3 and verse 21. That's the book of John, chapter 3 and verse 21. Let's get some more on the law. Again, that's John, chapter 3 and verses 21. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to life, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in a higher Look at that word law. Look at that word right there. Let's find out what that word means in the Greek. You got that, Kakao? Uh. All right, read that, brother. This is, this is in, uh, in the Greek from G2038. It says, be engaged in or with, commit, do, labor for, minister, minister about, trade, work. So let's put the word work there, or say raw. I'll put a find a word to put there, or say raw from the definition from the Greek, and read it and put that word there for me, Kakam. This is John chapter 3, verse 21. But he that doeth truth, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are labor in for a higher. Right. They labor in a higher. They works is in a higher. But let's find out what the word light. You see, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. They ain't talking about no flashlight or no sunlight. They say he cometh. He say he that doeth truth cometh to the light. Let's go to Proverbs 6 and 23 and find out what this light is. See, who's going to come to the light? I ain't talking about come to your flashlight or your room light. Okay, like people say, I seen the light. No, nah, let's see what light the Bible is talking about in this scripture. It say, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought with a higher. Let's go to Proverbs 6 and 23. I know what this light is. That's Proverbs 6 and 23. Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp. Uh huh. The law, and the law is light. And see, the law is light. The law is light. So when we read, over here in John 3 and 21, 21, it says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light. What he's coming to? He's coming to the law. That his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought with God. He's looking in a higher. He's doing the law, statute, and commandments. Or she is. This is very important that we use these precepts upon precepts. Because through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, he hates every false way. So what is the truth? It's the law, statute, and commandments. That's the truth, people. Let's go to John 8 and 32. 
That's John chapter 8 and verse 32. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. He say, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What's the truth again? We read it in Psalms 119 and, 40, and 142. He said, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. We just read in John 8 and 32, and you should know the truth, right? You should know the law, and the law shall make you free. I pray that y'all see that. We just read it in Psalms 119 and 142. I'm going to read it again. I read, go back to Psalms 119 and 142. And hold your finger on John 8 and 32, all my brothers and sisters. Go back to Psalms 119 and 142, and then flip your page back over to John 8 and 32. Read it when you get there, Kakam. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Go ahead. So now we know. Now flip over to John 8 and 32. Find out what this truth is. This is the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You should know the law, and the law should make you free. That's why Yeshua say his laws is not grievous. They're not hard. It frees you. It frees you from all this wickedness, this wickedness that we, we, we got going on all around us 24-7. All the time, 364 days a year. It's wickedness every hour, every second of the day. If we walk in the light, which is the law, we're free. Now this stuff is penetrating on us. It's falling off us like water down a, a duck's back. It just rolls right on off. Only if you stay in the truth. Only if you stay in the spirit. Now, once you leave the truth and you leave, you get out of the spirit, because those that worship Yeshua must worship in the spirit and truth, you leave yourself open, brothers and sisters. The law is the only truth on this planet Earth, in the heavens. The law is the only truth. That's why we push the law 24-7, 364 days a year. For some people, 365. Depends what calendar you're looking at. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. We're going to read six verses, 10 through 16. Get some examples. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 10 through 16. Again, that's Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 10 through 16. Please pay attention to what the calm is about to read and follow along. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verse 10. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the, of the Lord thy power, Keep his, command, keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Right, so he's telling us right now. He's giving us advice. If we listen unto the voice of the Lord thy power to keep his commandments, and his statutes, which are written in this book of the law. So it's not a book of, of, of prophecies and only and genealogy. This is a book of law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy power with thy heart, all thy heart, and with all thy soul. In other words, don't come half-stepping. Submit. Humble yourself. Because that's the only way you're going to keep these commandments. 
It's another scripture in the Bible says you ain't never fooling yourself. So when you come to the Most High, come with all your heart and with all your soul. In other words, cry out. The scriptures tell us we have not because we ask not. The world teaches us not to be humble. Be a woman about it. Be an independent woman. Be a man. You don't need nobody. That ain't what the scriptures say. The scriptures say cry out. Follow these laws, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead. Verse 11. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Right. It's not hidden. And it's not going far. You ain't got to go nowhere to get it. It's right here. It's not here. And everybody like, oh, it's, it's, it's hidden now. Uh, what is the law of sense commandment? No. He gave it to us. We'll be reading it tonight. If you didn't know what you're supposed to do the law of sense commandment, by the time you get off this farm, you're going to know then. He say, it is not. Where were we at? He say, and this. Oh, my glasses is messing up. He say, and this commandments, which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. So you ain't got to go nowhere to get it. It's at your fingertips. Even more today than it was 20 years ago. Everybody got a smartphone, a computer. Just type it in. What is the commandments of the Most High? And you're going to get it. Keep going. Verse 12. It is not in heaven that thou shalt uh-huh. say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? Right. So stop at your comments too, brother. And say, it is, not, it is not in heaven that thou shalt say, because, you know, Israel is always looking for excuse. Well, I ain't got it, you know. He just told us it's not hidden from us, and it's not far off. So he let us know, it is not in heaven that thou shalt say, who should go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. No, it's right here with you. You have no excuse. That's what this scripture is saying right here. Keep reading. Verse 13. Neither is it, neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it, in, bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Right. So, in other words, he didn't give you no excuse. It's at your fingertips, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Verse 14. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Right. So it's right there. You have no excuse. The word is nigh to you. It's near to you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. That thou mayest do it. You got no excuse. Because this law is not grievous. And we all heard the law. We just put a blind ear to it. But our ears are circumcised. We call it to this truth to do what? To serve. Keep these laws, statutes, and commandments. Go ahead, brother. Verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. You know what that means. Life is eternal life by keeping the commandments. Death is sin by breaking the commandments. So what Ahai is saying here? Say, see, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil. He's giving you a choice. Make your bed hard, you got to lay in it. I'm choosing life. What is life? Keeping the commandments. What is death? Sin is a transgression of the what? The law. That's death. And everything else is evil. If you ain't keeping the commandments, it's evil. What's good? A high is good. And all that he say is good. He made the first day to the seventh day. After every day, he say, 
it's all good. Everything he told us to eat is good. How these laws are good. Go ahead. Verse 16. And that I commanded thee this day to love the Lord thy power, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy power shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And this is what he told our forefathers. And this is what he's telling us right now. He said, and that I commanded thee this day, told you it was a commandment, to love the Lord thy power, to walk in his ways. What is his ways? The law of commandments. And to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgment that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy power should bless thee in the land where thou goest to possess it. What a land that we try to go to. That was for the brothers then. And his law says, these are all such commandments for us today. But the land we're trying to go to is that new Jerusalem. Some of us might not make it to the wilderness. We might die before we get to the wilderness. He's able to rise us up again. The plan is right there in that new Jerusalem for everlasting life. But how are we going to get there? By keeping the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. What is the law? It's the truth. It's the truth all day. Let's go to Exodus, and let's read some of these laws. And y'all tell me, ask yourself, is these laws grievous? Is these laws is bad for us? We're just going to read a couple of them that most people know, or they say they know. They're just a hearer of the word, but not a doer. But the people on this line, we're doers. We're not just hearers of the word. And we got many more laws, but we're going to read these laws. Go to Exodus chapter 20, and I'm not going to say anything well. Um, Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17. So that's Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17. Everybody should know where that at. We learned that in Sunday school. That's Exodus chapter 20, 1 through 17. Go ahead, Kakam. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 1. And Ahiah spake all these words, saying, verse 2, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Go ahead. Verse 3, thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's simple. That's a... Straight commandment. Don't have no more other powers before me. Because they can't do nothing for us. That's easy. Go ahead. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. That's not hard to do. Well, that's easy to do. Okay. I can follow that one. Go ahead. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy power, am a jealous power, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Exactly. That's why we got it. We didn't do nothing. What we do? Our forefathers did it. But everybody think, oh, I don't bow down to these images. You bowing down when you're giving uh, service to them. You acknowledge them. You ain't physically bowing down on your knees. You're holding, you're holding them above, above something. It's nothing but a piece of wood or a stone. Don't even bother with it. That's an easy one to keep. The world got a problem with that because they don't have the truth. What is the truth? The law. Go ahead. Verse 6, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Wow. That's where I want to be, Paul. I want him to show what? 
mercy unto thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. Not Elder Gabor's commandments. The Most High commandments. Christ's commandments. Go ahead. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy power in vain. For the Most High, Ahiah, will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. That's an easy one. Keep that holding your face shut. How can you give cursings out of the same mouth and give blessings? And you better not take his name in vain. Go ahead. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, we all know people got a problem with that. And every day is the Sabbath. I praise the Lord every day. Well, why do you go to work? He said, chill, rest. So every day is not the Sabbath. But we see the world got a problem with this one. Why? Because they don't have the truth. What's the truth? The law. Read. Verse 9. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So how every day is the Sabbath? <laughs> you tell one of those people that, so-called Christians, they want to tell you every day is the Sabbath. Just read in verse 9. Go ahead. Verse 10. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the, most, of the Lord thy power. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou know thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So we just want to chill on that day. Everything that we got possessions on, manservants, your gardener shouldn't be coming cutting your grass, your maid shouldn't be up there cleaning your house. If you got cattle, you shouldn't be out. He shouldn't be she. You should be milking him, and should be out there working the fields and the strangers that is in within the gates. Anybody that's coming, that's coming to your house to work on your lights and so on and so forth, anything. Nah, brother, come back on uh, after the Shabbat. Now, we understand we got grace. We understand that. But this is willingly. If you, if you don't need it right then and there, don't do it. Because Christ showed us an example of that when an animal fell in the hole. Wisdom telling us to get that animal off the hole that day. If your job telling you you got to work on the Shabbat, and you're like, well, I, I can't work on the Shabbat. Ah, nah. All right, you know what? Take the rest of the week off. And just watch how your family go without and you. Wisdom is the knowledge of the principle. I think wisdom is the knowledge of all things. With all that getting and understanding. Wisdom and knowledge is the principle of all things. With all that getting, get understanding how to exercise these laws. Don't go out there trying to tell the boss that you can't work the Shabbat. Don't volunteer to work the Shabbat. But if you have to work it, work it. That's what your grace can. The most I understand that. But go ahead, brother. Verse 11. For in six days the most higher higher made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in mm-hmm. it is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Most High Ahia blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Right. Hallowed, he separated it. That's what he did. So this is a special day. We all can do this, but the world got a problem with this. Why? Because they don't have the truth. What is the truth? The law is the only truth. That's why the world is like it is today, especially this next scripture you want to read. Go ahead. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. You see that happening every day in the world. People don't honor their father and their mother, their mom and their dad. Why? Because they ain't got the truth. They don't give a heck about the law. None whatsoever. 
But this is what the scriptures tell us to do. Honor thy father and thy mother, that the days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. This is what he told our forefathers. This is what he's telling us today in so-called 2015. Now, if your father and your mother is not in this truth, when they tell you to go against the law, statute, commandments of the Father, a higher, that's not honor them. You think, no, 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 I ain't doing that. And, not, and your mother and father need some help, even, even though they treated you bad. The most high tell you to honor your mother and your father. You don't curse them out. That's what the world do. We see it all the time. If you don't believe me, go to the mall. You ain't got to go to the mall. Walk your neighborhood block. Go ahead, brother. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. That's easy to do. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. A lot of people got a problem with that. They got spiritual adultery. Where they go into these different religions. A lot of people YouTube shop. And people commit adultery on their mate. So once we walk in the spirit, that will be easy to do. That's yourself. Make a covenant with your eyes, woman and man, like Job did. If you don't want nobody speaking with your mate, make a covenant with your eyes and say, I'm not going to look at no woman in that, in that, in that light. I'm not going to look at no man in that light because I wouldn't want that to happen to me. But we got to walk in the spirit. Because, you know, adultery, the way people dress today, man and woman, the devil's working. He's never sleeping. So stay in the spirit. We would not, we would not, we would not commit adultery. Go ahead. Verse 15, thou shalt not steal. That's easy. It's not yours. Leave it alone. The Bible says if a man don't work, he don't eat. Don't be stealing nothing. Even though you think you can get away with it, you might get away with it from man, but you can't get away from it from a higher. These are the commandments, people. This, this is the truth. So when you say somebody, I'm in the truth, now you know when you tell them I'm in the truth. I'm keeping the commandments. How, and how would you prove that? Psalms 119 and 142. Go ahead. Verse 16. Come on. Come on, brother. Lock in. Verse 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So don't be lying on nobody. So you don't want nobody lying on you. That's easy to do. Go ahead. Verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is in thy neighbors. Right. So that word ass is an animal. So in other words, don't be jealous over what no one has. In other words, don't try to live like the Joneses. Oh, they got a new car. Oh, she got those new shoes on. Oh, baby is fine. Oh, look at that big and tall and handsome he is. I wish I had. I wish I was. Why, he got a manservant. Why, he got a maid. No, don't worry about that. Because by you doing that, it's going to lead you to evil, greed. You're going to want what that person wants. You're going to do what King David did. He wanted another man's wife. He's looking at this woman. Man, this woman is married. Got that brother killed. Because you covenant. That brings forth sin. So don't do that. That's easy to do. As long as you walk in the spirit, as long as you do the truth. Now, let's see what will happen to those that do not take heed to the most high definition of truth, which is the commandments. Let's see what happened to these people. Because the Bible gives examples. That's why I love the word of the most high. It's balance. He gives us examples. He tells us what to do and what we got coming to us if we do it. And he tells us if we don't do it, what we got coming to us. That's balance. That's a righteous judge. That's a brother, a power that hear both sides 
of the situation and judge righteously. Ain't nobody going to go to judge and go, well, I didn't know, uh, I meant this. That. Nah, ain't none of that going on. Your sin is going to be your accusers. There ain't going to be no a public defender, a Johnny Cochran. Nah, you're going to have a dream team, in other words. It's going to be your sin is going to be pointing the finger at you. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 28 and verses 9. That's Proverbs chapter 28 and verses 9. Again, Proverbs chapter 28 and verses 9. Go ahead, brother. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Bro, can you read that again? Verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. What is the law? The truth. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, which is the truth, according to Psalms 119, 142, and say, even his prayers shall be abominations. That was the most I ain't hearing nothing you got to say. I got a relationship with the most high. He heard my prayer. Oh, is that right? And you ain't keeping no laws? You go to church on Sunday? You commit adultery? You covenant? You're doing all these things. When the most high said in verse 10, in Exodus uh, uh, 20, he said, but the seventh day is the, is, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy power. That's his day. In it thou should not do any work, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, nor thy man service, nor thy uh, maid service, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is in thy gates. That's just the most high day. You talking about he said, your prayers is abominable. He ain't hearing none of that. The most high is serious about his laws, brothers and sisters. Don't let nobody take that from you. These are the keys to the kingdom. That's how we please the most high. Not by we knowing prophecy, which is good. Our genealogy from the tribe of Benjamin, Judah, Levite, Issachar. You know, scriptures that go, 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 go here, go here, go here, go there. Forever learning, never coming to the knowledge of the truth. They ain't keeping out one law. And you willingly breaking the law. But you look educated. There's going to be a whole lot of educated people in Lake of Fire. A whole lot. Read that again, brother. Please. Please read that again. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Brother and sister, don't let your prayer be an abomination. Please don't. Fight to keep these laws. Day in and day out. Don't let nobody steal your joy. Get mad, but sin not, the scriptures tell us. Let's go to Luke 13. Luke chapter 13, we're going to read uh, verses 25 through 27. That's Luke chapter 13, verses 25 through 27. Give the people time to get there. And go right ahead, Kakam. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13, verse 25. When once the master of the house is risen up and has shut to the door, and he began to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. Go ahead. Verse, 20, verse 26. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. Verse uh-huh. 7. 
But he shall say, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Iniquity is sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. And breaking the law is death. So that's self-explanatory. They knocking, Lord, oh, let me in. And what's that? Luke, um, Matthew, no, it's Luke, one of the scriptures. Uh, it's the same thing. Everybody say, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom. Well, here they do the will of the Father. So this is just another example. Read, we'll read it. It say, when once the master of the house is risen up, it's about Yeshua, and has shut the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, which you are. I don't know who you is. You denied me while you was walking this earth. How we deny the most high in Christ? By not keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. So you deny him, he will deny you. 27. Then shall you begin to say, we are eating and drinking in thy presence. I mean, you prayed and prayed to the Most High, thank you, Lord, for this food. I bless this pork and, and the shrimps and, and all the other abominational food. You told us not to eat, but I got a personal relationship with you. Whatever you, whatever you call clean, should no man call unclean. So this is what they said. We have eaten and drinking in thy presence, and thou hast taught. What's the rock here? And thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you. I know you not, which you are. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. So no matter how you think you're doing something good, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. You better check these scriptures. You better use these precepts in order to make sure that you're keeping the law of the commandments. Because a lot of people think they got a personal relationship with the Most High, but they ain't got the truth. They got a whole lot of knowledge. If that's why I say my people pray for the lack of knowledge. They have not submitted themselves to the knowledge of the Most High. They go about this stuff and say, oh, this is the way I want to serve the Most High. I'm in church every Sunday, praying to the Son of God, but they think they're praying to a higher. A lot of them really think they are. But the Most High got some for those brothers and sisters. They don't get the opportunity to wake up. But he's talking about the people that know and don't want to wake up. Like I always say, you got two types of people, people that know that they don't know and want to know, the other people that know that they don't know and don't want to know. These are the people he's talking about right there. They're talking about, we ate at the table. They're knocking on the door. Christ is telling them, kick rocks. Never knew you. Let's go to 1 Timothy, chapter 1, 6 through 10. That's 1 Timothy, chapter 1. We're going to read verses 6 through 10. And we got one more scripture after this, brothers and sisters. So you have a, it's actually just a, not a long lesson tonight, but I pray that you get some understanding. So that's 1 Timothy, chapter 1. Verses 6 through 10. And stop at your commas and your periods, Brother Kakam. Go ahead. The book of first, this is the book of First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 6. From which some having swerved, having have turned aside unto vain jangling. Go ahead. Verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Exactly. So a lot of them want to be, they, these are preachers. They're talking about they teachers of the law. They ain't they teaching, they teaching man's doctrines, man's law. Go ahead. Verse 8. 
But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. We know that. That's self-explanatory. The law is good if you use it lawfully. Go ahead. Verse 9, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Hold up right there. What do you mean by that? Hold up, Bob. He says, what do you mean? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. That's what the churches use, people. Guess what? Ain't none of us righteousness. We all fall short of the glory of the Most High. But if you, if you study this law and you walk in this law, you don't need the law. Why? Because you're doing the law. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. What is a righteous man? A righteous man is keeping the law. So you get penalized by the law. Go ahead. But for the lawless and disobedient, uh huh. For the ungodly and for sinners. That's who the law is for. I think all of us on this line fit one of those criteria. Sometime or another. We get out the spirit. So we need the law to keep us balanced. Go ahead. For unholy and profane. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. Go ahead. Verse 10, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stillers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. In other words, he's telling you, fill in the blank. Measure everything by the book. Go ahead. Verse 11. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed power, which was committed to my trust. Uh, Commit to all of our trust. Go ahead. Verse 12. And I thank Yeshua Christ, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Yes, we all should be thankful for this here. All of us should be thankful for this here. You say, and I think Yeshaya, our, our Lord, who have enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. We're in the ministry, brothers and sisters. So all praises to Ahaya. Like one young man said, he felt like he won the lottery. This is bigger than the lottery. You can't buy this. You got to be chosen. You got to be pan picked by a higher through his son Yeshaya to even have your eyes open to bring to be in this ministry, the truth ministry, the true gospel. Go ahead, brother. Verse thirteen: Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. That's the key. That's why I was saying up in the the, uh, the other chapter we just read, okay? The preachers know what's going on, but I tell you about those two chapters that know that they don't know. But the, some people that in those churches, they're looking for the truth. That's why they go 52 weeks of a year, trying to find some truth. It's a trap. That's why we need to hit the highways and the byways, pass out these flyers. Tell every people we see, anybody, black, white, green, yellow, blue, you tell them. And say, this is a faithful saying. So what was that? What verse you just left off? Of? Oh, here we go. 13. Who was before a blasphemer? Okay, we all been there. And a what? Persecutor. And in Julius, but I obtained mercy. Because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. We have no more excuses, brothers and sisters. Everybody on this phone, you have no more excuses. We're going to be accounted now. We're going to be responsible for anything that we do. For all praises to our higher by Shemeshaya and the one who walked, that he showeth mercy 
and forgiveness of sin. But he will not be mocked because you got the truth, which is the what? The law. Go ahead, brother. Verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ, Yeshua. That's what it is. Go ahead. Verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception that Yeshua Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. And we all fit that criteria. So guess what? We have an advocate for us. Christ died for us. And we're all sinners. But we got someone to stand in our place that died for us. All he asked us to do, speak the truth. What's the truth? The law is the only truth. That's what he's asking us to do. But we're going to get there. Go ahead. Verse 16. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first, Yeshua Christ, might show forth all long, all long suffering. Mm-hmm. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And that's what we hear today. That we believe on him. Because this brother had a pattern, and he showed it. And without these, these apostles, the disciples, not being obedient to the truth, we wouldn't have it today. They was obedient. We got to be obedient. Go ahead. Verse 17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise power, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. That's it. It say, now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise power, the only wise power, not man, not a rock, not a cross. We got a lot of brothers well spoken and sisters, but they don't fit this criteria here. They're not immortal, invisible. The only wise power, be honor and glory forever and ever. How long is that? So be it. How are we going to get this in? How are we going to honor him? It's by speaking the truth. What is the truth? The law is the only truth. Let's go to Acts 5, the last scripture for tonight, brothers and sisters. The book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. It's the attitude we must have. That's Acts, chapter 5. And verses 29. Go ahead, my brother. This is the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 29. Then Peter and the apostles answered and said, We ought to obey Ahia rather than men. This is the attitude we must take on every day of our life. We ought to obey Ahia rather than men. We ought to obey a higher rather to the way we feel. We ought, to, we ought to obey a higher than our wives, our mother, our children. But the scriptures tell us we put anything before Yeshua and his father, a higher. You're not worthy of being a disciple. So we're going to have this attitude. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey a higher. Rather than men. How do you obey a higher, brothers and sisters? That is the $100,000 question. Or should I say $450,000 question? The real question is, who do you obey? Man or a higher? Woman or a higher? Money or a higher? Fill in the blank. And you ask yourself, who do you obey? 
We must remember what Christ said in John 14 and 15, brothers and sisters. Read that for me, brother. We, could, we must remember this. We must remember this without a shadow of a doubt every day of our lives. Why? Because the law is the only truth. What is the truth? Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. So we've got to remember this all the time. Read John 14 and 15 for me, brother. This is what Yeshia said. This is what Paul was talking about, Peter was talking about in Acts 5, 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, you ought to obey a higher rather than man. Who did Christ come and what name Christ came? He came in his father's, he said, I need to do my father's will. So what Christ said in John 14 and 15, that's the highest, the highest will too. That's where Christ got it from. Read that for me, huh? This is the book of John, chapter 14, verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Go ahead. Verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. That comforter is the one of what? Go ahead that he may abide with you forever. Exactly. So, brothers and sisters, I pray that you got some understanding tonight. Remember, the title of the lesson is The Law is the Only Truth. The Law is the Only Truth. So when brothers and sisters ask y'all, and you say, I'm in the truth, now you got a scripture to show them. What you mean you in the truth? I'm in the truth too. The Bible tells you to prove all things. Who fast is that which is true? So what scripture are we going to take him to? Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. I pray that my brothers and sisters got some understanding tonight, and you exercise these laws, that's your commandments. Because he said his laws is not grievous. We read the Ten Commandments tonight. There's more laws, but they're not grievous. People tell you, you can't keep the law. Why you can't keep the law? You keeping America's law. You keeping Satan's laws. And these laws are good for us. So we can't do it. I love you all, and like I always tell you, stay in the spirit. With that, I yield.